Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato, and I'm Larry the Cucumber, and we're here to answer your questions. That's right. Now, today we've got a letter from Lucy Anderson of Phoenix, Arizona, who writes, Dear Bob and Larry, I am six years old. Sometimes I think there are monsters in my closet. That makes me real scared. Can you help me? Ooh, I remember once I thought there were monsters in my closet. Yeah, well, what happened, Larry? Well, it turned out that they were really monsters at all. Just my fluffy bunny slippers. And they're not so scary, just kind of squishy. Oh, I see. Well, Lucy Anderson, first check to see if it's just your slippers. And then watch this story about when Junior Asparagus got a little bit scared. Wow, that was really neat how God protected Daniel from those lions. And you did a very good job. Why, thank you. It was my finest hour. We're over here by QWERTY the computer to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. As I was saying, we're... See, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. <clears throat> well... Junior Asparagus learned that God is bigger than anything in the whole world. And because God loves us so much, he's always looking out for us. So we don't have to be afraid. Yep. And in the Bible, Daniel learned that God was taking care of him. Even down there with those big, scary lions. That's right. Now let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. Okay. <laughs> One pound ground beef, three slices of... Uh, QWERTY, this is a recipe for meatloaf. That's not a verse. Well, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. And God said in Isaiah 41.10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Hmm. So the next time you get scared, just remember that verse. And tonight, before you go to sleep, why don't you pray with your mom or dad and thank God for always looking out for you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye! Hey kids, welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Yep. Now Larry. Yeah, Bob? The other day I was walking home from my bowling league when I bumped into Marco, one of our TV friends. Oh, that, that's great. Mm-hmm. Now Marco had a question for us. He said that when his baby sister does something that makes him mad and then she says she's sorry, well, Marco's mom says he needs to forgive her. Why does he have to forgive? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. Well, I know. I'll tell Marco the story of the Grape of Wrath. Oh, that's a classic. Well, this'll be good. Once upon a time, there were some very cranky grapes. Um, are you sure that's how the Grapes of Wrath goes? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Bob? Well, yeah, Larry. Try not to interrupt. Oh, sorry. Once upon a time, there were some very cranky grapes. That's just terrible. Don't those grapes know it's not nice to make fun of people? Well, that's just it, Bob. They didn't know how bad it made Junior feel. Well, jeepers, Larry. What happened next? Luckily, Junior's dad heard him laughing and came outside to see what all the commotion was about. Hey, what's all the commotion out here? Boy, I sure am glad they got that straightened out. Yep, the grapes were really sorry this time. So once again, Junior forgave them. What? <clears throat> I said, once again, Junior forgave them. Are you serious? Well, I think so. Bob, am I serious? Oh, oh yeah, Larry. Uh, yeah, you're, you're serious. Mm -hmm. You see? I'm supposed to forgive them again after what they just did to me? Well, uh, yeah. You see, Junior, when we do bad things, it hurts God's feelings, too. God wants us to tell him we're sorry. The Bible says, when we tell God we're sorry, he will always forgive us. No matter what? No matter what. Wow! That's right. And because God always forgives us, we need to forgive others when they hurt our feelings, too. Well, how many times am I supposed to forgive them? Um, well, uh, Bob? Gee, you... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, let's ask QWERTY. 
Hey, QWERTY! Can you help us? We need to know how many times we're supposed to forgive people, according to the Bible. Maybe, uh, seven times? Matthew 18, 22. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Oh, seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. I see. Um, do you know what seventy times seven is? Mm, nope. How about you? Nope. Well, does anybody know what seventy times seven? Wow, that was great, Larry. But, um, are you sure that's how the story goes? Oh, yeah. Do you remember when we learned about forgiveness? Oh, my goodness. How could I forget? Well, do you think the kids at home would like to hear about it? Oh, most definitely. You would, wouldn't you? What'd they say? Um, I don't know. I think they said yes. Okay, great. Well... Should I tell him, or, or should you? Oh, go ahead. All right. Well, it all happened one summer while Larry and I were running a tour boat service. Yeah, you see? We had this boat, and we take some people, and we put them on the boat, and then we give them rides way out on the ocean. You see? <clears throat> Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. As Larry said, we had a boat, and we would give people rides on the ocean. But I remember that day. <laughs> We sure learned a lot about forgiveness on that island. Yeah. Well, we also learned about how many things you can make with bamboo. We made a bamboo raft, bamboo huts, a bamboo catapult, a bamboo helicopter. <coughs> we get the point. Bamboo. It's time to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. Bamboo, bamboo, bamboo. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Well, Junior Asparagus learned that it's easier to forgive others when we remember that God always forgives us, no matter what we do. Yep, and on the island, we learned that everybody makes mistakes sometimes. And when we forgive each other, we all feel better inside. And about bamboo. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us. Colossians 3.13b Forgive others as the Lord forgave you. Hmm, so, so that's why we need to forgive. Well, we're out of time for today, but remember... God made you special, and he loved you very much. Bye! Bamboo! Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Yep. I bet you're wondering why Larry has a shoe on his head. Yeah, Bob. Why do I have a shoe on my head? Well, I got a letter today from Latasha Robbins of Savannah, Georgia. Latasha wants to know what loving your neighbor really means. And that's why I have a shoe on my head? Yes. No. Well, kind of. Help me out here, Bob. You see, I'm about to tell Latasha the story of Flibber Olu. And in that story, you, Larry, have a shoe on your head. Oh, it's all so clear now. Hurry up and tell the story. My head's starting to sweat. Okay, here goes. We're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say. As I was saying, you see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. <clears throat> In the story of Flibber Olu, we learned that loving your neighbor means helping people, even when we don't really feel like it. And in space, we learned that loving your neighbor means we can be friends with everybody. Yep, even kids who are really different than us. We might even learn from them, too. Well, let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. Love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19.18. Now that means we should treat others just as nicely as we want to be treated. Oh, look at the time. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye! 
Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. I I'm Bob the Tomato. Larry! Just a minute! Are you okay? I'll be right there. Whoa, excuse me. Oh, uh, Larry? Yeah, Bob? Over here. Oh, yeah? Um, have you been cooking? What? Oh, you noticed my new hat. Your hat? Yeah, isn't it the coolest? Um, Larry, you've got an oven mitt on your head. Oh, yes, they're all the rage. Simply everyone is wearing them. Really? Well, all the cool people anyway. Yep, yeah, but you can't see where you're going. Isn't that a little dangerous? Fashion has its price. Larry, he almost fell into a toaster back there. Oh, Bob, Bob, Bob. Don't you read Veggie Beat magazine? This is a look. Without this oven mitt on my head, I just wouldn't be cool. I see. Hey, that reminds me of a letter we just got from Dexter Wilmington of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh, you yeah, don't say. I do. Now, Dexter says that sometimes when he's at his friend Billy's house, Billy wants to watch this TV show that Dexter's not supposed to watch. Now, Dexter knows that it's a bad show, but Billy says that if he doesn't watch it, it means he's not cool. What should he do? Oh, what a pickle. You know, Bob. Over here, Larry. You know, Bob. I think we need Cordy for this one. I'll be right back. Um, Larry, watch out for the... <laughs> sink. Ouch. Are you okay? They didn't mention this in Veggie Beat Magazine. <laughs> you know, Dexter, while I try to get Larry out of the sink, I want you to listen to a story about three boys named Rack, Shack, and Benny who were in a pickle just like yours. Oh, you're back! Well, I still haven't been able to get Larry out of the sink. I want to get out, Bob. But it's time now to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today, and God has a lot to say in his book. Larry, you know how I feel about that song. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone, and now that our song is done, we'll take a... Hey, that's cold! As I was saying, it's time to talk about what we've learned today. Right, Larry? I'm wet. Right. Well, Rack Shack and Benny learned that standing up for what they believed in was pretty hard, but it was worth it. When all their friends were doing things that were wrong, Rack Shack and Benny remembered what their parents had taught them, and that God wanted them to do what was right. In the end, God was protecting them, even in the fiery furnace. What did you learn, Larry? Well, I learned that doing something that you know isn't such a good idea, just to be cool, isn't very cool. I put an oven mitt on my head just because Veggie Beat Magazine said it would make me cool. Even though I couldn't see anything. It didn't make me cool. It made me, it made me bump into a toaster. And then fall into the sink. And now I can't get out of here. I'm going to be stuck here forever. And people are going to set plates on my head. And I'm never going to get to go to the circus or run through the fresh cut grass or feel the ocean breathe in my hair as I pilot my nibble schooner Felix off the coast of our family home at Kenny Bunkport. <gasps> oh, Auntie M, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Click, click, click. Are you finished? Yeah. Okay, Larry, do you see that spoon over there? Uh-huh. If you stand on that end of it, and I jump onto the other end, it'll fling you out of there, okay? Okay. This'll just take a second. I'm ready. Okay, here I come. Oh, that's much better. Thank you, Bob. Bob? Bob! I'm in here, Larry. Oh, there you are. Hey, let's see if Cordy has a verse for us. Stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you. Second, Thessalupians, Thessalians, Thessalupians. Uh, Bob? Thessalonians. Thanks. Can I get out now? Not yet. Second Thessalonians 2.15. That means remember what your parents teach you and what you've learned from the Bible. If someone wants you to do something that you know is wrong, stand firm and do what's right. In our story, Rack, Jack, and Benny stood firm when all their friends were doing things they knew were wrong. So, Dexter, the next time you go to Billy's house, maybe you could bring one of your favorite videos to watch instead. He might think it's pretty cool. It isn't always easy, but knowing you've done the right thing sure feels good inside. Right, Bob? Yep, that's right, Larry. 
I'd like to get out now. Well, that's all the time we have today. Remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Goodbye! Danger lurks in the big city. Disaster waits in every dark alley. Peril behind every park bench. The world needs a hero, but not just an ordinary hero, no! A special hero! A superhero! I am that hero! They call me Larry Boy! Wherever there is trouble, I'll be there! Whatever a helpless vegetable calls out, I will answer! Evildoers, beware! You are no match for the awesome power of Larry Boy and his... Super suction ears! You doubt? A demonstration! Um, hi kids! I'm Bob the Tomato, and I think that's Larry the Cucumber. I'm Larry Boy! Who are you? Uh, Larry, it's me, Bob! Bob? Bob, I know no Bob. Hey there, citizen. Would you give me a hand with my super suction ear? It seems to have malfunctioned. Uh, okay. What do I do? Well, it's just that I'm afraid it's about to let... <coughs> go. Ouch. Wow. I didn't know being a superhero could be so painful. Maybe you should just go back to being plain old Larry. But I don't want to be plain old Larry anymore. Why not? Well, there's nothing special about plain old Larry. He can't do anything neat like fly or save people or anything. He's just plain old boring. Oh, not feeling very special, huh? Nope. Hmm. Hey, I know. What? I could... Ah, my... Oh, Larry, my... my no... Sorry. You got my... Hold, Bob. <coughs> Bob. Hold, hold back. Hold back, Bob. Um, well... What I was going to say is that we... <laughs> Ow! That's smart! Hey, look! I'm a Larry go round <laughs> As I was saying, we just got a letter from Myra Eggleston of Youngstown, Pennsylvania. Now, Myra has a lot of brothers and sisters, and they're all bigger than she is. She says that they can do really neat things like play soccer and dance ballet, but Myra's too little. So Myra wants to know what's special about her. Oh, Myra, I know how you feel. Well, Myra and Larry, I'm going to tell you a story about a boy named Dave. Uh, Bob, what are the Philippines? The Philippines are a group of islands off the coast of Southeast Asia, but that's not important now. The Philistines were people who hated Israel. They wanted to take Israel's land and make the Israelites their slaves, so they'd have to do whatever the Philistines told them to do. Oh, that's bad. You're right. So the Israelites needed to protect themselves. The children of God. The Bible says that the Israelites were God's chosen people. God led them through the desert. He helped them walk across the Red Sea. And whenever they went into battle, God was there with them. They had always known that if God was on their side, no one could stand against them. Wow. But King Saul and his men were so scared of big, tall Goliath, they forgot that God was even bigger. Oh, dear. Uh, Larry... You've got something on your, uh... Huh? Oh, never mind. Once again, no one would answer Goliath's challenge. Well, what did you think of the story? Oh, my goodness. That was amazing. Dave was just a teeny little guy. But he beat Goliath, who was the biggest, strongest guy they'd ever seen. Oh, my. I laughed. I cried. It moved me, Bob. Well, good. It's time to talk about... It's time to talk about what we learned today. Uh, Bob, why are you whispering? Because whenever I say that, that song plays. What song, Bob? You know, the What Have We Learned song. Oh, you mean the song that plays every time you say, and now it's time to talk about what we've learned today? And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Yep. That's the one.
Kind of catchy, isn't it? You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Now, in our story, no one thought David could do anything important. After all, he was just a little guy. Why, even King Saul tried to change David by putting his own armor on him. It kind of reminds me of another guy who thought he had to put on a costume to be special. Yeah. But David loved God, and he knew that even though he was small, God could help him do big things. Afe, he took on that old Goliath when all the other guys were too scared to try. But that's not all, Larry. David went on to be the king of all Israel. Wow, that's pretty good for a little guy. Well, that's pretty good for any guy. Yeah. Well, if God could help David do big things even though he was little, then I sure don't need to dress up like a superhero to be special. Nope. Larry, you're special just the way you are. Aw, oh, thanks, Bob. Hey, let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us. Okay. QWERTY, do you have a verse for us? With God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. Oh, great, because I've always wanted to be a chicken. Do you think God would turn me into a chicken? No, uh, no, 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 no. That's not what the verse means. It's not? No, it doesn't mean that we can just do whatever we want to do. It means that anything that God wants us to do, we can do. Oh. You see, God wanted the Israelites to win that battle. But that meant that someone had to fight Goliath. Even though David was just a kid, he knew that if God wanted him to beat Goliath, he could do it. That showed just how much David trusted God, and that's why he became such a great king for Israel. Wow! So, anything God wants me to do, I can do. That makes me feel pretty special. And Myra, I hope that makes you feel pretty special, too. Uh, one more question, Bob. What's that, Larry? Um, does this mean that I can't pretend I'm Larry Boy anymore? Larry, as long as you feel okay about plain old Larry, because plain old Larry is very special, you can pretend to be whoever you want. Oh, great. Well, we're out of time for today. Remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye! I'm just going to hang out here for a while. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> the world needs a hero. I am that hero. They call me Larry Boy! Hey kids, I'm Larry the Cucumber. Welcome to the very first VeggieTales workout video. I hope you're ready to sweat. I know I am. Now hop to the left, and hop to the right, and hop to the front, to the back, and one more time. Now if you don't have a trampoline at home, you can just use a couple of slinkies and an old rug. And what you want to do is squeeze and jump, and squeeze and jump, and squeeze and jump, and squeeze and oh my, and squeeze and jump, ouch, and squeeze and oh. I think Larry is a little confused. Actually, this is the very first VeggieTales sing-along tape. What we're gonna do is play some of our favorite VeggieTales songs and put the words on the bottom of the screen. Like this. <clears throat> okay, boys, are you ready? Mary, me sure oh, 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 we were born ready. Here we go, oh. in the one, in the two. VeggieTales, 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 VeggieTales. See? It's just that easy. Just sing the words on the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> All, all right, guys, that's enough. Guys, hey, 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 peas. Peas! Bob! Hey, Bob! Oh, I am feeling woozy. Bob! Roll tape! Oh, dear. Jane, stop this crazy thing! Hey, kids, I'm Larry the Cucumber. Welcome to the very first VeggieTales home improvement video. I hope you're ready to monkey wrench. I know I am. 
What we're gonna do today is change that old leaky fixture on the sink. We're gonna replace it with a new one, which will be quite attractive and last for years to come. Oh, and by the way, it's very important with any plumbing job to shut off the water supply. So I had my assistant Jimmy turn off the water to the kitchen. Oh, you meant the kitchen sink. I thought this was bathrooms and decks. Bob! Now, kids, we're going to sing along with one of my favorite songs, the bunny song. Monsieur Bob, let not that pasta sing the bunny song. Oh, ho, ho, ho. thank you for pointing that out, Jean-Claude. But this is the new and improved bunny song. This is the one we're supposed to sing. I see. I'm Larry the Cucumber. Welcome to the very first VeggieTales success video. Are you ready to make millions of dollars in real estate with no money down? I know I am. Larry! Yeah, Bob? Don't you see? This is a sing-along video. Oh, a sing-along video. I love sing-along videos. That's where you put the words on the bottom of the screen so people can sing along at home, right? Yep. Oh, the kids are going to love that. What song should we do first? Never mind. What? Hey, Bob, guess what? I bought a whole chocolate factory with no money down. You did what? Hi, kids, and welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. That's right. So, who's got a question? Oh, hey, I just remembered. I got an email from a kid named Ezio Vieri in Hackensack, New Jersey. You got a what? You know, Bob. Email. Aren't you wired? Online? Surfing the web? HTML, good buddy. Oh, uh, I got cable last month. You are so early 90s. Anyway, Ezio said he just did something that he knew he wasn't supposed to do. Now his friends are telling him to lie about it so he won't get in trouble. What should he do? Ooh, a lie can be a very dangerous thing. Do we have any stories about that? Bob, I'm all over it. Huh? The same thing happened to Junior Asparagus once. It did? I don't remember. Ezio, grab your popcorn, turn down the lights, and get ready for Larry Boy and the Fib from Outer Space. Roll film. Huh? Larry? Wow, that was really something. You did a great job, Larry. Boy. Thank you, Bob. Um, we need to hurry this along. I have a meeting with the action figure people in ten minutes. Action figures? Yes, Bob. Larry Boy Mania is sweeping the nation. If you're not on board, you're gonna miss the train. I, uh, I had no idea. Now you do. Yes, well, we're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. I like that song. Let it play. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Well, Junior thought the best way to get out of trouble was by telling a lie. Yep, but to cover up for the first lie, he had to tell more and more lies until finally he was trapped. A slave to his lies. That's right. He thought a lie would set him free. But in the end, the only way for him to get free was by telling the truth. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us. The truth will set you free. John 8, 32b. You see, Ezio, the only way for us to really be free is by doing what God wants us to do. And God wants us to always tell the truth. I'm not saying that you won't get punished for what you did, but as Junior learned, facing your parents can be a lot less painful than getting stuck in a big lie. Oh, is that right? Well, we gotta clear the stage now, Bob. It's time for the world premiere of my new music video. Y your what? You're joking, right? He's not joking. Larry, we gotta talk! Hi, kids, and welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. 
And I'm Junior Asparagus. And we're here to answer your questions. Yep, that's right. I bet you're wondering where Larry is. He was a little tired after the last show, so we decided to let him sleep in today. But don't worry, he'll be here pretty soon. In the meantime, Junior Asparagus has very graciously agreed to help out. Hi! Now, Junior. Yes, Bob? Today we got a letter from Victor Bartholomew of Sausalito, California. Oh. Hi, Victor! Victor has a problem. He says there's a kid named Lewis in his class who hit him yesterday. Oh, my. Oh, my is right. Now, in church, Victor just learned that God wants us to be nice to people, even when they're not nice to us. But Victor doesn't really feel like doing that. Deep down inside, he wants to hit Lewis back. What should he do? Should he do it his way, or should he do it God's way? Oh, wow. I know how you feel, Victor. Sometimes the stuff I learn in church doesn't sound like very much fun. Sometimes I feel like doing things my own way, too. Do you suppose we have a story about that? Oh, do we? Have I ever told you about the Israelites? Hmm, the Israelites. Oh, yeah, I remember those guys. Weren't they supposed to be God's chosen people? That's what the Bible says. Oh, I bet they always followed God's directions. Ho, ho, ho! You'd think so, wouldn't you? But sometimes God's directions didn't seem to make sense to them. You see, well, maybe I should just show you. Huh? Close your eyes, Junior, and don't open them until I say so. All right! Well, what'd you think? That was amazing! But did they really build a rocket in the middle of the desert and get slushies dropped on their heads? Uh, no. Those were some things that we put in our story. Remember? We were using our imaginations. Oh. But there really was a guy named Joshua, and the Israelites really did walk around Jericho, and the walls really did fall down. Wow! Yep. If you want to learn more about Joshua, you can read about him in the Bible, in the book called Joshua. Wow, he's even got his own book? That's right. We're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. I'll be right back. Huh? What? Not so fast, Tomato! Yes, we love that song! You see, we know that God's word is for everyone And now that our song is done, we'll take a look The Israelites learned that since God loved them and was always looking out for them, that His way was the best way! That's right! And because Joshua obeyed God, he went on to be a great leader too, just like Moses. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us. As for God, His way is perfect. 2 Samuel 22, 31a. Well, gee, if God's way is perfect, I guess it makes sense to obey Him. I think you're right, Junior. So, Victor, I know being nice to someone who hasn't been nice to you doesn't sound like very much fun, but following God's directions is always the best idea. And maybe Lewis doesn't need a punch in the nose. Maybe Lewis needs a friend. Yeah! Well, we're out of time for today. Remember... God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Is it time for the show? Aw, oh, nuts. Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato, and welcome to... Uh, I'm Bob the Tomato, and welcome to... Larry, what are you doing? Come over here. I'll be right there. Wow. What is this thing? It's my new Thuvi Action Jeep. I've been wanting it just forever, and now it's finally mine. Wow. You must be pretty happy to get a cool toy like that.
Oh, yeah. Well, almost. Almost? Well, there's just one more thing I need to be really happy. What's that? The camper. The what? The Suvi Action Camper. You just hook it up to the trailer hitch on my action jeep, and I'll be ready for a weekend of wilderness fun. Oh, so once you get the camper, then you'll be happy? I don't know. There's also the dirt bike. The dirt bike? And the jet ski. Uh... And the action hang glider. Larry, how much stuff do you need to be happy? I don't know. How much stuff is there? <laughs> Maybe this would be a good topic for today's show. Huh? Hey, it's the French peas. Hi, Jean-Claude. Hello, Philippe. Hello. Hello, Monsieur Bob. I think we can help. Uh oh, really? Oui. Tell me, Tomato, where do French peas come from? Ah, uh, France? That's right. And in France, we have a story that I think will answer your question. It's called Madame Blueberry. Madame Blueberry? I think I've seen that one. Doesn't it have Jerry Lewis in it? No. Be quiet and watch the film. Sorry. Man. <laughs> Pull yourselves together. Yes, you have a show to wrap up. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Where were we? Madam Blueberry. All right, that does it. Cue the music. Unless, of course, you have any objections? No, I don't care. Go ahead. Hit it, boys. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Well? Okay, I can do this. Me too. All right, but make it snappy. <laughs> Madam Blueberry learned that being greedy makes you grumpy, but a thankful heart is a happy heart. Like the little kids, right? That's right, Bob. <laughs> Just like the little kids. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. Okay. <laughs> Proverbs 1527a, he who is greedy for gain troubles his own house. Boy, being greedy sure brought trouble to Madam Blueberry's house. It sure did, but even before Madam Blueberry's house got smashed, being greedy made her a very grumpy berry. Oh, is that right? Well, I don't want to be a grumpy berry, so even if I never get the camper or the dirt bike or the jet ski, I'm going to be thankful for what I do have. That's great, Larry. And kids, if you don't want to be grumpy berries, you should try to be thankful for what you have, too. Well, we're out of time for today. Remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Hey there, citizens. We really had an adventure today, didn't we? That was a thorny one. I mean, once that problem got going, it just spread like a... Uh, Master Larry, enough with the puns. Can we please get on with this? Uh, sorry. We're back at the Larry Cave to wrap this one up and send you home. Alfred, do you suppose the Bible has anything to say about what happened today? As a matter of fact, it does. It's coming up on the screen right now. Here, take a look at this. Reckless words pierce like a sword. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 12, 18. Hmm. So the Bible says, if you're not careful, your words can hurt people, just like a sword. Oh, is that right? Junior and Laura didn't mean to hurt Alfred, but they weren't careful with what they said and who they said it to. And it caused big problems. But that verse also says that if we use nice words, we can make it all better. We can make people feel good. Remember, God doesn't want us to tell stories that can hurt. He wants us to spread nice words. And if you can do that, you'll be that hero too. 
See you next time. Ta-ta!